No, I'm not an astronaut. I'm actually wearing the latest cask aero helmet. And here at GCN, we're going to take a look at the various array of aero helmets available within the Peloton. Team Sky's aerodynamic weaponry in helmet form is the Cask TT Bambino. Very distinctive, stubby design. A lot of research has gone into the wind tunnel testing of this sorts of helmet. And at the moment, the stubby one has the least turbulence at the back end of the helmet. There's a slight curved nub effect as well to really smooth off the airflow. Six vents, but this essentially is like putting on a crash helmet. Very, very snug indeed. Giant Shimano have the luxury of two choices of aerodynamic helmet made by Uvex. This is the Race 4 and this is the Race 6. We'll have a look at the Race 4 first. Traditionally, this is used on the track by a lot of the sprinters and kilometre riders. And again, it just looks like a traditional helmet. It's very stubby, it's small. This is preferred by riders who, uh, try, who generally keep their head still because with the longer aerodynamic shape uh, helmets, if you move your head around, it creates a massive disturbance. And we'll look at the Race 6 right now. Strikingly different very long teardrop effect but again straight away you notice the tail has been sliced off again to reduce to reduce turbulence this particular sort of helmet you have to be a rider who's experienced at time trials and comfortable at riding in a set position because if you tilt your head like that all the time you're looking down that creates a massive amount of turbulence so this is ideal for riders who can actually lay that back part of the helmet and this is Lud Ludvigsen's helmet a great time trial rider on the back, keep a solid position, and you've got a wonderful aerodynamic effect there. This, uh, apart from the vents, this shares other features as the Race 4, full retention system in there, and again, the lovely touch is the uh, removable visor. Again, these little uh, magnetic buttons. Here we have the Scott Aerodynamic Science Helmet, as used by Orica Green Edge, and this is their weapon of choice. Obviously, it's got the lens that's removable at the front here. It's interesting that various teams are opting for the long traditional teardrop shape where some teams like Sky for example with a cask are using the snubbed effect which apparently creates less turbulence and disturbance at the back end. It's a really really good padding inside obviously a retention system too to keep it nice and still. Here I have Giampala Garusso's Giro Stubby helmet. I do like the name Stubby it's uh, almost like a little uh, cartoon character but uh, quite distinctive looking. It's like a hybrid really. It's, uh, it's not quite as short and stubby as for example a cask, but it's a lot shorter than one of the aero helmets that a company like Laser would make. Quite a, a steep drop on the sides, but again with a visor that actually drops down so the rider can opt to ride it in the hot weather without the visor. Completely encased, no vents whatsoever. So the rider is going to get pretty warm, but of course it's all about speed. So this bit actually grips to the side of the face for a very, very snug fit. So you don't get air going inside the helmet and causing any uh, sort of wind disturbance. But a very distinctive shape for Giro here. This is the aero helmet of Europe car and it's the Garneau Voltis. The most distinctive feature, I guess, is the golf ball effect, which as we well know, really does reduce drag. This bit here I think is removable so that you can, in the hot conditions, get well, some, some airflow through the helmet because again, there's no vents at all, apart from a tiny one at the side here. Snub back to reduce the turbulence. So here we have Team Belkin's Bell Javelin aero helmet. This is a very traditional aerodynamic teardrop shape. A little bit more venting than some of the other models we've seen. So you've got two vents at the front here. Then of course you've got the back port just here as well. Very, very snug fit to the side of the head. And they've obviously got foam padding, so there is comfort there. So it fits really snugly. This is the AG2R aero helmet made by Ekoi, and it's the CXR13 model. And as you can see straight away, They've completely dispensed with the full teardrop and gone for the real stubby shape. If you look inside the helmet again, as with most models, you have the uh, retention system in there for comfort. But again, a very short stubby helmet, very similar in fact to the cask helmet. This is the Movistar cat-like chrono aero helmet. And again, cat-like, I've gone for the more stubby type design, dispensing pretty much with the traditional teardrop there's not that much ventilation in this helmet. Again, these more stubby helmets uh, are dispensing with the aero vents, but there is a little bit of light relief at the back. I was going to try it on, a little bit sweaty, so I might try another helmet on a bit later on, but this is Malori, so the TT specialist. This is the Lampre Merida Kabuto Aero TL. This is actually uh, designed and made in Japan, and the company make uh, helmets for MotoGP. But uh, the specific design here, basically teardrop. I mean, the teardrop design is proven to be very, very quick. 
Again, some teams shear off the back of the helmet to have the stub effect. There's no ventilation at all, so it's all about aerodynamics. No arguing there with that. You're gonna see that one coming, aren't you? Here we have the aerodynamic helmet for the Lotto Bellasol team, and it's the Laser Wasp. I think the name pretty much says everything about it. It's almost insect-like, this one. Very, very distinctive indeed. Classic teardrop drop design. There's no actual uh, venting at all on the top. It's completely smooth. There's no, there's no dimpling, as we see with some other helmets. But this is a very traditional teardrop type design from Laser. So here we have the helmet of Cannondale Pro Cycling, and it's Oscar Gatto's Rudy Project Wing 57. It's a uh, halfway between teardrop and the more rounded, uh, snubbed kind of shape. Got quite an aggressive design at the front with a double vent. The shape, although it's cut away, so it doesn't actually come to a, a complete point, a traditional teardrop. There's some sculpting designs just on the side here, and of course then it sculpts in to actually a point at the back. This is the aero helmet of Team Trek Factory Racing, and it's the Duro Selector. Very different than the stubby, as used by a few of the other teams. It's got a more traditional teardrop shape that finishes up in a point. Now, not too much venting on this one either, but very interesting that Giro do two particular types of helmet in the stubby and the selector. But this one, of course, is suitable for riders who are used to a rock steady position. And once they're dialed in on the drops, on the tri bars, they'll get that settled in between the shoulder blades and away they go. Jim Paolo's is far too small for me. I think I might need a medium. It's all about speed. For more Giro content, click here. And to subscribe, click on me.